Thank you to Preserve Gold for being a sponsor of our Newsmax podcast. Thinking about investing in physical gold or silver but not sure who you should trust? The folks at Preserve Gold are the perfect partner and highly rated for all your precious metal needs. Text the word DAILY to 50505 and get up to $10,000 in free gold and silver and to learn more today from Preserve Gold. All right, welcome to the Newsmax Daily for Thursday, May 23rd, 2024, 52324. If you're taking notes, Friday Eve and Chardonnay Day, as in wine, in case you needed an excuse. Today is also hashtag World Turtle Day, established in 1990 by the American Tortoise Rescue for the protection of all tortoise and turtles and their habitats. No, a turtle and a tortoise is not the same thing. All right, in the headlines, if you missed it, AI chip maker NVIDIA, been talking about it a lot uh, first half of the week, surpassed its already ridiculous earnings expectations of $24 billion of revenue with $26 billion of revenue for the quarter. Billion with a B. They forecast $28 billion for the next quarter. $26 billion in three months. Think about how ridiculous that is. $26 billion, three months worth of business. The stock markets, especially the NASDAQ, all opened well into the green today. So hopefully a good day for your 401k or for whatever else. What is this? A financial show, Tony? Hey, you get a little bit of everything on the Newsmax Daily. It's called news. Anyway, turns out a lot of NVIDIA's business is tied to Taiwan Semiconductor. Taiwan, yes, constantly under threat from China, right? The U.S. is spending billions of dollars to protect Taiwan and Taiwan Semiconductor. Did NVIDIA get any money from the Bipartisan Chips Act? Former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley, in her first public appearance since suspending her presidential campaign, said she will be voting for Donald Trump. Trump has not been perfect on these policies. I've made that clear many, many times. But Biden has been a catastrophe. So I will be voting for Trump. Trump would be smart to reach out to the millions of people who voted for me and continue to support me and not assume that they're just going to be with him. Like it or not, I have to agree with her. You cannot assume anything, and I don't think that Donald Trump is. The former president may or may not be winning over some of the never-Trump Republicans, but he is winning over some of the I've-had-enough-Democrats with a rally this evening in the Bronx borough of New York a historically blue area and home of New York Democrat Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, president of the Trump Derangement Syndrome Organization, an area of New York that she partially represents in Congress as well. My colleague Mike Carter went to the South Bronx yesterday. When it comes to this district that we're in right now, the South Bronx, it's one of the poorest and one of the most minority majority congressional districts in the entire country. Donald Trump says he speaks to these voters. Well, not too long ago, one of our reporters, Kara Castronova, got out and spoke to former Biden voters about how they feel about the current president and how they feel about Donald Trump. Minority communities, we're not seeing the improvement. Uh, I, I, there's inflation with everything, food, gas, insurance prices. I mean, you name it. Well, Bidenomics is not working. It's, it's just a complete mess. It's a disaster, especially here in New York City. We're fitting it very hard. If you could say anything to Biden right now who says that the economy is improving, especially in black and brown communities, what would you say to him? That's lies. I believe that's lies. Heavy lies on that, for sure. Donald Trump's father uh, was born here in the Bronx back in 1905. Back in 1977, President Carter, a Democrat, he made a trip here to the Bronx where he blamed Republican leadership, past Republican leadership in the presidency, for all of the poverty that he saw. Tomorrow, we can expect Donald Trump to do the same, but on the other side of the aisle. 
Newsmax reporters Mike Carter and Cara Castronova in the Bronx. You remember when Trump went to the New York bodega a couple of weeks back, people were lined up on the streets cheering, USA, USA, and that little kid saying, we love Trump, we love Trump. That was in the Bronx. The latest Siena poll conducted last week shows President Biden's once firm grip on the Big Apple has dropped to single digits, about 8%. uh, Donald Trump has also been suggesting a possible rally at Madison Square Garden in the heart of New York City, which is easily accessible from all boroughs of New York, as well as Long Island and New Jersey. So it could be huge. Imagine if the Democrats' plan to tie Trump up in court and keep him off the campaign trail led to him actually winning New York. Most of the reason he's doing this is because he's been stuck in New York. Nationwide, Trump is leading Biden 48 to 44 percent in the seven swing states. That is according to the Bloomberg News Morning Consult poll that was released yesterday. By the way, the Yankees, the baseball team, not the people that live up north, They have a home game this afternoon, right now. So there could be, you know, 40, 50,000 people getting out of the game before the rally starts. And they just, you know, mosey on over from the stadium to the rally. Senior Trump campaign advisor Jason Miller on Newsline with Bianca De La Garza. I feel like when uh, Donald Trump is out of the courtroom and, and meeting with real Americans, there's this energy around the, the people who are, you know, hurting uh, economically and they see Donald Trump and his policies that just made life so much better for them. Uh, what do you expect at the Bronx tomorrow? This is deep blue. And uh, we expect, uh, obviously, from what we're hearing, a lot of enthusiasm like what we've been seeing, something perhaps uh Alvin Bragg was not contending with when they thought they'd just lock him up in a courtroom. Well, the Bronx is another community that Democrats have left behind for all the years of pandering, and then they never actually deliver and make something better for the people who live in that community. President Trump is going to be joined by elected officials, might have a surprise guest or two. Think about what might draw some interest being there in the Bronx, but just goes to show the way that President Trump has changed the nature of the Republican Party. Think back like a decade or 15 years ago, people would associate Republicans as being Paul Ryan or Jeb Bush, uh, Mitt Romney, something like that. Now, the Republican Party is the party of the working class, working class African Americans, working class Hispanic Americans, working class uh, people from every single community. That's what we have in the Bronx, and that's the energy President Trump is going to bring tomorrow. You know, and on the flip side, Jason, you just hit it on the head. You know, Biden talking at the NAACP dinner, and he's painting this bleak, uh, you know, kind of look outlook for black Americans. It's going to be a very different message tomorrow for Donald Trump. They, they want to kind of they're losing black voters. They're pandering. They're desperate, clearly. Uh, but he, he Biden's the reason for a lot of this economic issues here. And he's the, the message is just so dark. Yeah. And so when you think back to the Trump economy, everybody did better under President Trump. But under Biden, with inflation, that's jacked up uh, the amount of debt people have on credit cards. What does that impact the most? Uh, Think about groceries. Think about gas. Think about housing costs, particularly housing costs, as we talked about the New York metro area. And so the working class are the ones who feel the brunt of this much more than anyone else. So everyone did well under President Trump. But under Biden, only the top 20 percent people who can afford to pay in cash for everything that they're doing and who are kind of impervious, the super rich who are impervious to inflation are doing okay. This is, people are really suffering because of Biden's policies. Well, appreciate your time today. Obviously, in the wake of uh, that stunning uh, filing regarding the FBI, a lot to talk about. I always appreciate your thoughtful comments. Jason Miller, come back here real soon. The stunning filing regarding the FBI that she's talking about shows that agents were prepared to use deadly force in last year's raid at Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. Deadly force on the former president of the United States and his family in the search for documents. Documents. Is there really anybody except people that are getting a big fat paycheck from a network that think this is normal? More from Greg Kelly. If that stuff would make our founding fathers nauseous, this might have just killed them. That Donald Trump would be 
treated the way he's being treated, that a federal agency would invade his personal home as they did on August 8th, 2022, and, well, basically try to frame him. Try to frame him. And also, you heard about this, right? Possibly try to kill him. Now, at first, that was part of the outrage that I had all the way back in 2022. When the FBI shows up, they have guns, right? I mean, that's what made it so outrageous. One of the things. But then when we see on page four in uh, Christopher Keiss's motion to the federal court, Trump's lawyers, um, this is what it said on the warrant, I believe. Law enforcement officers of the Department of Justice may use deadly force when necessary. Now, that might be boilerplate um, language, you know, copy and paste. It's on every everything in the DOJ that involves FBI agents or whatever. But this part is not. It's specific to Donald Trump. Take a look, please. Um, should the former president of the United States, F. POTUS, that's what that stands for, arrive at Mar-a-Lago during the, uh, you know, the raid, the FBI will be prepared to engage with former president of the United States and the United States Secret Service security team. Engage. If he shows up, the FBI, armed to the teeth, will be able to engage. Now, what does that word mean? Does that mean talk? Does that mean negotiate? Because when I hear law enforcement use the word engage, and we just heard that they're authorized to use deadly force, they usually use the word in this context. Take a look. They saw a shooter, a female, who was firing. The officers engaged her. She was fatally shot by responding police officers. Officers immediately responded, engaged the suspect. Engaged the suspect. The officer engaged the suspect and fired shots and used deadly force to stop the threat. Yeah, you see what I mean? And they're throwing around this word engage. We will engage the former president of the United States. The FBI will. Creepy stuff. Then again, the FBI is, well a creepy organization these days, and so is the Department of Justice. Greg Kelly is the host of Greg Kelly Reports, weeknights at 9 o'clock Eastern. Check it out tonight, and you have to hear the rest of this. This stuff is not new. This is what this deep state is. This is what the federal government is. This is what the FBI is. Now, J. Edgar Hoover, first director, 50 years director of the FBI, and this guy was a bad dude, right? I mean, he was wiretapping and blackmailing Martin Luther King, domestic spying, opening people's mail. I mean, totally extra constitutional. But this guy didn't think the Constitution, he didn't have to bother with that. And he may have run a plot, helped run a plot against Richard Nixon. Everybody understands he's bad, right? But if you go to Washington, D.C., the FBI headquarters is actually still named for him. J. Edgar Hoover, that's building. Now, it's Fascinating because you know, every military base in the country has been renamed. You know, Fort Bragg is now Fort Harriet Tubman or something. I mean, they changed all of the names to politically correct, more sympathetic figures, whatever. But that remains the same, maybe because they like him, maybe because they revere him, maybe because that's the way things are still done. I know they were done that way under Comey, six foot, eight foot tall, Comey. Oh, yeah. You know, Comey's back hanging around just in time for the election, right? Um, he's not totally wrong here, though. He's obnoxious. But, yeah, I think he may have a point, And it's a good one. Are you concerned that it may get a, a, a test unlike any other if Donald Trump is reelected? I mean, when you think about a second Trump administration, what do you think the implications would be for the FBI? Oh, serious for the Justice Department and the FBI, because Trump is coming for those institutions. He knows their power, and I think he has regrets that he didn't work hard enough to corrupt them last time. So he's coming for them, and that's a danger for all Americans. No, I think it's a major um, gift to the American people. These are thoroughly corrupt organizations. They are. We know it. Everybody knows it. And, you know, it's they're so protective of their agencies. The Founding Fathers, what we were talking about earlier, they weren't consumed with agencies. They were consumed with the people, our rights, the FBI. You can't find it anywhere in the Constitution. A lot of us believe it should be, well, 
You got to get rid of it and start all over again and give it a new name. Nobody likes Bureau, right? Federal Bureau of Investigation. Again, you can catch Greg Kelly reports tonight and every night at nine o'clock Eastern. Rob Schmidt also discussed this with Senator Ted Cruz. All right. Texas Senator Ted Cruz joins us tonight to talk about all this, sir. It's good to have you back on the show. I want to start here. The FBI says nothing uh, that wasn't standard procedure uh, was used with the Mar-a-Lago raid. They say it was all standard. And, and you know, maybe that, that's the problem. Clearly, there was a lot of dissent from the agents angry at the DOJ higher ups who were pushing for this very combative raid. Well, look, the, the, the fact that that this search warrant and, the, and and that the procedures for this authorize the use of deadly force and the fact that Merrick Garland personally signed off on it is an absolute outrage. As, as you know, I do a podcast every week, Verdict with Ted Cruz, Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Today's podcast, we do a deep dive on exactly this topic. And and listen, their talking point that this is standard at some level. That's right. When you have a search warrant, it's standard that you authorize the use of deadly force. And that makes sense if you're executing a search warrant on a drug dealer or a criminal that, that you know that it can get violent and, and, and the, the agents need to be able to defend themselves. This was not a run-of-the-mill search warrant. This was the former president of the United States. If you look at the documents, they, they anticipated the potential of having run-ins with the Secret Service, and indeed they anticipated the Secret Service potentially resisting. And so the utter lack of judgment of the attorney general to sign off on, yep, go on in, guns blazing, to raid the former president, it, it shows just how partisan yeah. and, how, and how politicized the Department of Justice has gotten, right. that the attorney general could personally think this is a good idea to go in and potentially shoot the president or anyone near him. That makes no sense whatsoever. And anyone with any modicum of judgment would know that. Any modicum of judgment, except for the people who are getting paid ridiculous sums of money to say otherwise, as I mentioned a moment ago. That's Texas Senator Ted Cruz, and let me take you back to a segment on National Report with Emma Reckenberg that featured Senator Ted Cruz calling out Secretary of State Anthony Blinken for the State Department issuing condolences and holding a moment of silence for the death of Iranian President Raisi earlier this week. Senator Ted Cruz of Texas got into a heated exchange with Secretary of State Antony Blinken having to do with the State Department sending condolences to Iran on the death of Raisi. In fact, here's Cruz and his message to Antony Blinken. Your State Department put out a statement sending condolences for his death. Mr. Secretary, is the world better today now that Raisi is dead? Given the horrible acts that he engaged in, both as a judge uh, and as president, uh, to the extent he can no longer engage in them, yes, the Iranian people are probably better off. You, you didn't say that in your statement, did you? Uh, I, I believe that, uh, that we did. Would you agree it's disgraceful for the UN to be? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll look at what they've done. We certainly would not do that. The, what they've done is flown the flag at half-staff. Mm -hmm. Is but that disgraceful? We, w we wouldn't do that, and we would certainly find that. And, and I would note that's the absence of American leadership. Secretary of State Blinken seemed not to be fully aware of what exactly the State Department's statement and response was. And today in Washington, the Senate is expected to vote on a revised border bill. We get more from Republican Senator Jim Lankford on Wake Up America. By the way, Democrats don't want to vote for this bill because it doesn't have all the things that they wanted to have. They wanted to have amnesty. They wanted to have all these different elements in it that they've always said that that's what they want for border security. It doesn't have any of those elements. What it has instead is doubles the number of deportation flights, adds dramatically more asylum officers, changes the standard for asylum, speeds up the hearings, takes away a lot of the appeals so things go a lot faster. And it even has an emergency authority that says if we get 5,000 people coming at us, those massive numbers, then we take away all due process and people go out. So the first person that crosses is arrested, quickly screened and deported under this process. But if you get to 5,000, you're just arrested and deported because we don't have the manpower anymore. So it is much, much stronger than Democrats want to support. And I'll be interested in this messaging from Democrats if they are actually going to actually vote for it today because it's much stronger than anything that they've ever wanted to do. Oh, okay, so mm -hmm. oh, let me just try to 
follow what you were just saying. So do you think, is this the same bill that you initially co-authored several months ago? Or is this a stripped down version of that bill? So you nope. still stand by this bill today, but you're going to vote against it. Is that accurate? I am, because they're not trying to actually pass anything. This is a political stunt that they're trying to do, and I'm making very clear with my vote that this is a stunt, not an attempt to do anything, and I'm going to be interested in how many Democrats walk away from this, or... So you don't think this Democrats is successful today, Senator? You don't think this will pass Sorry, today? Say that again? You don't think this will pass today on the Senate floor? No. no, I don't think it'll be even close. I think there'll be far more Democrats that vote against it even than did last time, because, again, it's much stronger. They were only willing to vote for this if it had the Ukraine funding and the Israel funding, but as it stands alone on it, it's a much stronger bill than they would ever want to do for border security. Oklahoma Senator James Langford on Wake Up America with Rob Finnerty and Charla McBride. So that is happening on Capitol Hill today. We'll keep you updated throughout the day and over at the White House. It's a big day with another state dinner as the president and first lady of Kenya visit. President Biden and President Ruto will also hold a bilateral press conference. Can't wait to hear what Biden might say there. The Republican National Committee's Washington headquarters was briefly evacuated on Wednesday. Police investigating two vials of blood that had been addressed to former President Donald Trump. Again, this is at the RNC. A hazmat team was called in after the virals were discovered, according to Capitol Police, who said they would continue to investigate. It's unclear whether there was any message accompanying the vials of blood explaining why they were sent there. This also kind of went under the radar yesterday, but there was new information released in the Hunter Biden investigation. More from Chris Plant, host of The Right Squad. Bombshell evidence released just today by the House of Representatives Ways and Means Committee showing that Hunter Biden lied. Can you believe that? During his February 28th sworn testimony, that's under oath, before the Congress of the United States of America, lie number one, uh, according to the committee, he lied about the recipient of a WhatsApp message, a WhatsApp message where he threatened a Chinese businessman linked to the company CEFC to uh, pay him, invoking my father. You know who his father is, right? Hunter says uh, he was high or drunk at the time that he messaged and he it was the wrong guy. But phone records actually showed that he did indeed message the, you know, the correct communist, the communist that he intended to message. Lie number two, Hunter Biden claimed that the shell company he established with one of his associates, Devin Archer, who's been convicted of other crimes, uh, the company Rosemont Seneca, where he accepted foreign payments, lots and lots of foreign payments, was, was not under his control, he said. However, evidence uh, that was gathered since shows that he was, in fact, the, the beneficial owner of the company's bank account, if that counts for anything. And lie number three, he swore that he never helped anyone obtain U.S. visas. But that pesky evidence again uh, shows that uh, an email chain included Hunter where he, tasked, he was uh, tasked with providing cover, that was the language they used, to uh, CEO of Burisma uh, on the visa, on the visa. Now, Burisma, of course, the company that was paying him just about a million dollars a year for a no-show job in Ukraine in a business he had never worked in, in a language that he never spoken in. And, uh, and his buddy also, uh, another one of his buddies, had the same deal, nearly a million dollars a year for a no-show job. And he went there and he lied and he lied and he lied and he's under oath. Uh, but, you know, don't you know who his dad is? Yeah, well, I mean, he's hoping that his dad can get him out of this mess that he himself has created. And I'm actually I, not, I shouldn't say I'm shocked, but you would think his lawyers, you know, you spend a lot of time talking to your lawyers and when you're handling these sorts of hearings and, and walking through the answers, mm -hmm. uh, this is a huge problem from a legal standpoint. I don't know. I don't see him getting out of this in any way. Um, I think it's really complicated, um, his legal situation uh, moving forward. That's Mercedes Schlapp on the Right Squad with Chris Plant. That's weeknights, 10 o'clock Eastern on Newsmax. Check it out. And keep up to date with all of the news all day long with all of the Newsmax shows beginning each and every day with Wake Up America. Newsmax is available on most major cable systems and make sure you're streaming on the Newsmax Plus app. If not, go to NewsmaxPlus.com, get signed up. You can get a free trial. It includes all of your favorite shows and hosts. The Balance with Eric Bowling, Greg Kelly Reports, Carl Higby, Wake Up America, Rob Schmidt Tonight, and more with 
with fantastic analysis from people like Governor Mike Huckabee, uh, Professor Alan Dershowitz, Judge Napolitano, Carrie Lake, special programming, documentaries, and much more. I'm Tony Marino. Thank you, as always, for listening to the Newsmax Daily. Continue to share it with your friends and family. Enjoy the rest of your day and keep on fighting the good fight. News breaks every minute, every day. You need the app, the Newsmax app. Find it free on your smartphone store. Then watch us anytime, anywhere. It's our America. We conquered it. We built it. Great values like honesty and fairness. Great courage. A great nation needs a free press. Newsmax is it. 30 million Americans regularly go to Newsmax when they really need to know. They watch Newsmax TV at home on the free Newsmax app. They go to Newsmax.com. Start today. Newsmax is real news for real people.